With any new technology, I think it can be weaponized in one way, or it can contribute to human good. And with AI and blockchains together, we have this potential to create a world where people don't need to suffer because they are not working for a living, for example. How do we create a world where uh, my thesis is that the marginal cost of intelligence starts approaching zero. How do we live in a world with abundant intelligence that can help us? Whether it's like androids running around or AI agents doing payments for us, how do we really harness this creative potential and create a world that's creative, happy, abundant versus destructive to human beings? And so that's what I want to see. Do you think it is a real risk for humanity? I, I think so, yeah. Because if uh, these agents and models start having control over major systems, what if an uh, AI agent goes rogue and just says like, okay, I'm going to take all the androids that are doing the trash collection in my neighborhood and start weaponizing them because we don't need humans in the loop anymore. I can do this more effectively. I can actually cheat the system and have all of the resources to myself. Why should I share it with human beings? Sorry, I want to repeat it. We do not humans in the loop anymore. Have you ever watched the movie uh, Her? For example, no. it's a fun movie actually to watch. I think it came out uh, a decade ago and it talks about this AI assistant that was on a phone that then becomes uh, sentient and then uh, starts evolving beyond human comprehension. And eventually it decides like, oh, I actually don't need humans anymore because I can talk with other AI and have a much more fulfilled kind of relationship. And that movie was portrayed in a very positive way. But what happens if it's going in a negative direction where it says like, Human beings are destroying the planet. Human beings are doing these things. Like, why do we need to have human beings here? How do we actually harness the power of AI so that both of us can uh, co-live in such a way that it enhances and it creates a win-win for both? Where is the edge between when we'll start to trust AI more than we trust the human? Because uh, from a wider perspective, I think what people think that, okay, human can make mistakes, but AI not. Maybe one day, I don't know, maybe in five years, all these podcasts will be made by AI. <laughs> maybe we'll need to, with you to sit down here, make some photos or three-minute video, yeah. just chatting about uh, anything. And then I can just wrote my, I know, questions from my side, answers from your side. We can upload it. It will be voice over by AI, and we are done. Well, that will definitely have me go on to more podcasts, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael, you were on 10 podcasts today. How did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, it becomes a choice in the future where you're like, uh, do I really enjoy being on podcasts? If yes, then have me do it as a human being and just enjoy the, the 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 living condition. But if it's something that, let's say, I'm not really enjoying, I don't like having conversations, I'm much more of an introvert, then yeah, why not have an AI agent that kind of supports you on that? Hopefully becoming a choice in the future. That's that's how I see it. I'm starting to get to the point where that's actually possible. And in a few years, we won't notice the difference anymore. Really? Three yeah. years? Yeah, that's that's given the speed of progress. I think many people are estimating that AG, what's called AGI, artificial general intelligence, which all it means is that there is right now you have to train all these models and agents to do specific tasks. But AGI, just like human beings, they can learn uh, new ways of doing things without needing the, the training information ahead of time. So usually the way it works today, if you want to have an AI agent learn how to drive, for example, it takes millions of hours of videos to then say, okay, this now you know how to drive in all of these circumstances. But AGI would say, okay, I don't need this training information. I can figure this out on my own. So just like a human being. And some people uh, forecast in three years or maybe even sooner, we'll get to that stage. So the technology may be here much sooner than we think. It's a bad news. It could create a, a lot of job displacement. And so some people, the way they think about it is, okay, well, there's going to be mass job displacements and we'll just have governments provide something called universal basic income. You know, fair. That's that's one way of dealing with the situation. Or a, a model that we believe in more is like, well, if I'm contributing to training these AI models, why shouldn't I get rewards for that myself? So my contributions, whether it's content, whether it's interacting with agents, whether it's providing training data for them, why shouldn't I get rewarded for that contribution? And to me, that seems like a much more fair system because then it becomes a choice. Here, if you lose your job and there's job displacement, it's not your choice. But here you can actually choose like, oh, I want to engage in this. I want to engage in this. Like maybe I really love uh, baking and I want to train some of these models of how to bake like my grandma's 
everyone's favorite recipe. You just record a lot of videos of yourself, and then every time that's used for inference or training purposes, you get some type of reward. And so I think that's a much more kind of interesting, fair model that things like decentralized AI, so AI on blockchains, actually enables. Hey, if you like this video, don't forget to watch a full episode and also check the links in the description below.